Hello, AFCM family. My name is Pastor Bev Hicks, and I pastor Northland Faith Church in Halliburton, Ontario as well. I'm the regional director for the province of Ontario. I've been asked to bring to you this month, October 2020, Faith Aid, which I am honored to do so. Well, we're certainly living in troubling times, and I believe that we're living in the last days before the church is taking up, taken up in the rapture. But in these days, we certainly need the strength and power and wisdom and the leading of the Holy Ghost to help us in these troubling times. We're ambassadors for Christ, and we must shine for him, represent him, and finish the work that he has assigned us here on earth before he returns. But we're seeing around us a world where hearts are growing cold because of what's going on in the world today. And Jesus said this would happen before his return. Matthew 24 and 12 in the NIV, Jesus said, And because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. I saw a Facebook post just recently, and it read, What a frightened world needs to see is a fearless church. And how true that is. But I also think that a cold-hearted world, along with it being frightened, needs to see a church shining with the love of God, and to see the faith and hope that is within us. Jesus commanded us to love. John 13, 34, Jesus said, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Now, Jesus gave this command to his disciples just before he went to the cross in order to establish the new covenant. And at that time, it was a new command. But after 2,000 years in a world that is growing more and more cold-hearted every day, this commandment still applies to his believers and followers today. Because love is the law of the new covenant. In the book of Matthew, we read where Jesus tells of the two greatest commandments. Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Now, if everyone in the world followed these two commandments, there'd be a lot less trouble, a lot less heartache and pain, a lot less conflict going on in the world. And furthermore, if the body of Christ would follow these two commandments, I believe that we, the church, would have more impact on the world. Yes, I agree. It's difficult to love in a world that's full of hate. It's difficult to love those who are unlovable. It's difficult to love those who have loveless and cold hearts. But as Jesus said, if we only love those who love us, what good is it? Well, the good news is Jesus never commanded us to do anything without giving us the power and the ability to do so. And that's the reason he sent the Holy Ghost, the helper, to help us, especially to help us to love, to help us to love with the agape love, the God kind of love, because as 1 John 4 and 8 says, that God is love. The Holy Ghost pours into our hearts the agape love or the God kind of love, unconditional love, that love that never changes because God never changes. Romans 5 and 5, it says that hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who's, who has been given to us. Now, the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit is the spirit of agape love, because he came from the one who is love, or agape love. And when we receive the Holy Ghost, that agape love has been poured into our hearts, filling our hearts with the love of God, or the agape love, so that we can love God, love others, love each other, love our neighbors, and as well, love our enemies. 1 Corinthians 13 and 13, Paul talks about faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these uh, three attributes is love. Because without love, there can be no true faith. 
Loveless faith is nothing but an empty religious exercise. Galatians 5 and 6 says that faith works by love. And without love, there can be no genuine hope. How can we hope for something that we don't love? The agape love of God will never cause us to be ashamed of what we're hoping for. And when God's love is in perfect operation, everything else will work in harmony. Jesus would never have accomplished his great plan in this world if he wasn't filled with love for his Father and the love for us. God's love never fails to accomplish its purpose. I appreciate what uh, Brother Todd Rowan said in last month's Faith Aid, how important it is to pray every day in the Holy Ghost to build up our faith guarding our hearts. And that's true. But it's important that we also pray every day in the Spirit to be filled with the Spirit, who is the Spirit of love, so that we are filled with the agape love of God. That's why it's important to fellowship with God every day, who is love, and praying in the Spirit. Paul said in Ephesians 5 and 18, he says, be filled with the Spirit. And with what is happening around us, it's easy to let our hearts become overwhelmed with fear, doubt, and discouragement. That's why we need to guard our hearts with the love of God. So don't be stirred by these things. Instead, we need to stir up the love of God on the inside of us, praying in the Spirit, filling our hearts with the Spirit and the love of God. 2 Timothy 1 and 6 and 7 says, where Paul says to Timothy, he says, Wherefore I put to thee to remember, stir up the gift of God that is in you by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind. I trust I've encouraged you today. Thanks for listening. God bless you, everyone.